Well, I'm going to talk about equality. Uh, equality is super important, but I'm going to explain why equality alone is not the goal. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, equality is super important, but by itself, it's not enough. Uh, so let me show you some data going back all the way to 1800 to make clear what I mean by this. Uh, we're starting all the way back in 1800 and looking at life expectancy. And as you can see, uh, grouped by continents, uh, they're very close together. Uh, life is not very long. Uh, people were pretty much equal, and we don't want to go back to that equality because uh, most of the people in the room here would be dead uh, <laughs> in that uh, situation. But if we look forward, uh, we see these lines change a lot. Uh, by 1910, uh, life expectancy in Europe and the Americas has gone up uh, quite dramatically, but it has not gone up in Africa and Asia. In other words, some very positive progress in some areas created inequality between those places and the rest of the world. So where are we today? Well, in the last 100 years, there's been a massive improvement in life expectancy on every continent. Uh, you can see a little wiggle there uh, in the line for Africa, which shows that when the HIV crisis hit, uh, life expectancy actually went down uh, for a period until we learned how to do a better job both preventing it and treating it. Now, no matter where you're born, you'll live quite a bit longer than ever before. But you still see uh, there's a substantial gap. Uh, you know, about 16 years there, and that's just not fair. Uh, being born in a particular location shouldn't be the thing that determines how long you live. So our task uh, is to close that gap. And when we do, uh, we won't just have equality like in 1800, uh, we'll have life being better in absolute terms for everyone. Uh, so that's where we're trying to go. Uh, progress and equality. Now, you know, a lot of this comes through thinking about uh, the babies being born. Uh, since I started talking, uh, uh, we've got over 800 babies have been born. And every time you see a, a dot flash up on this global map, uh, that's a new birth. And what the color is showing, it's, it's talking about what their lives are going to be like. Uh, at last year's Goalkeepers Conference, we focused on uh, the importance of health, nutrition, and education as the things that will determine uh, what your life is like. Those factors make up what we call human capital, and it's key to prosperity in every community in the entire world. And so we're uh, coding those dots by human capital. Uh, the green dots are uh, for a child who's born in a place where they're likely to get uh, great health uh, support, uh, have great nutrition, and lots of education. And the red dots are uh, if you're born in an area uh, where those resources are going to be uh, very, very limited, and then yellow is in the middle. As you can see, uh, just that location you're born in uh, determines uh, your likely course. And so for the next few minutes, we're going to dive into this idea of geography. Starting, uh, let's look at this at the country level. So here, we're taking two factors, uh, the uh, child survival rate, uh, what percentage die before the age of five, that's on the health uh, x-axis there, uh, y-axis, sorry, and then on the uh, x-axis, you have years of education. Uh, and so you want to be in the upper right. That is, no child to deaths and uh, 18 years of education. If you're down uh, lower and to the left, uh, that's not good. So this is showing the year 2000. And now we're going to fast forward and see how it shifts uh, uh, as we move up to 2017. And we're going to color the dots where there's been an improvement on both health and education is green. And countries that didn't progress, uh, we're going to show as red. And so what you're going to see is a lot of movement up and to the right. Uh, and actually, only two countries, uh, Syria and Dominica, 
uh, that didn't improve on both metrics. There's another three countries that are war-torn that we don't have the recent data for. But overall, what we see uh, is that virtually every country has improved. Uh, and I'm surprised. I'm an optimist. You know, I, I work on these numbers a lot. Uh, but when I saw that, I actually asked the team to go back and really look hard and, and see if that's the case. Uh, but uh, they're quite sure. Uh, so that's very good news. Now, we do have, uh, this is the less good news, quite a gap there. So we're all green, but the absolute differences are still quite dramatic. So even though health and education are getting better in almost every country, the gap between the best off and the worst off is very, very large. And, and that's our, our job to drive equality. So we have to understand this gap and why the progress in closing it uh, is a lot slower than we'd like. Now, uh, to look at this, we're going to take what we've shown in white now, the high income countries, take them off, and just focus on developing countries. And we're going to do something that's quite phenomenal, never done before, uh, but with our partner IHME, uh, this is uh, for the first time uh, been done. We're going to look at the subnational level. Uh, so here we're seeing about uh, 17,000 uh, dots. Uh, these districts are inside the development countries, and this is what a, a new analysis and new sources of data have allowed us to do. Uh, these sub-national regions, uh, actually in India, are called districts. Uh, in Nigeria, they're called LGA, local government uh, areas. In the United States, they're counties. In a lot of places, this is about 200,000 people, and so looking at this level, uh, gives you far more accuracy than just looking uh, at a country as though it's monolithic. Uh, you know, if we looked at the U.S. Uh, just at the country level, we'd see it's very different than if we look at Manhattan uh, versus uh, other districts. So I think there's a lot more insight uh, to be had here. And now let's do the same thing of uh, indicating which of those districts uh, in green improved in both measures and which of them uh, in red did not. And here, you know, it's really phenomenal. Uh, you've got 99% of districts have improved. Uh, there are some red districts, but uh, not a, a huge number. And so, you know, this is a message that often doesn't come across. Uh, the world is getting better, even in the very toughest places, child survival, literacy, uh, nutrition, uh, but this district data uh, is very actionable. Uh, it, it means that in addition uh, to being able to take best practices from one country to another, now we can see the opportunity uh, to do something that should be even easier, uh, which is taking best practices from one part of a country uh, to another. So now uh, we're just looking at India. Uh, these are all the, the districts there. Uh, India, of course, is the, the world's biggest developing country. Uh, and what we can see here is that the better off districts are, are doing very well. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll highlight a specific one, which is Valor, uh, which is uh, in the south in Tamil Nadu. And there, uh, what we're seeing for education on child survival uh, is almost the same as what you would see in a rich country. Uh, Valor's uh, in between uh, Bangalore and Chennai. Uh, and you can see it's not all by itself up there. There's a lot of districts in India uh, that are very high performing. Uh, in Valor, 98 of 100 children live to see their fifth birthday. And most of the kids uh, get a very good high school education. Um, but other districts in India are more like uh, far poorer countries. Uh, for example, uh, in the state of Uttar Pradesh, where our foundation has a long-running uh, partnership uh, to work on improving health and nutrition, uh, there are some districts uh, that are, are still behind. Uh, Budawan, for example, uh, it's almost 10% of children don't live until their fifth year. Uh, and most of the kids uh, won't get an education past primary school. So this comparison, although it's quite stark, 
uh, shows a huge opportunity. You know, India is committed to take federal resources uh, and uh, focus them on uh, these districts uh, that are behind. And the practices that are going on up in Valor of the health system and the teacher training, those uh, we should be able to get everywhere in the country. And, and so this is another dimension uh, that we can drive. Uh, right now, India isn't on track to achieve uh, the SDGs, but Bavlor is on track. In fact, uh, they've achieved them uh, 10 years before uh, the deadline. And so uh, you know, now we have to really understand that, uh, understand the, the systems approach there, the tools that were used. Uh, and this is true worldwide. The, what I showed here for India in terms of the gaps inside the country are also true uh, for other developing countries. For example, Nigeria is a country uh, that uh, I focus on uh, quite a bit, and it shows the same uh, dramatic differences. So how do we go about uh, transferring uh, best practices? Well, last year I talked about uh, innovations like new seeds and new vaccines. Uh, and you know that work continues, very, very important. But innovation isn't just about uh, the tools, it's also about the systems for delivery. Uh, and particularly in education and primary health care, uh, that's a delivery system. Uh, and uh, one measure that we have progressed on is getting kids into school. Uh, between 2000 and 2010, uh, the number of children who are not in primary school uh, dropped uh, by more than half. It was 40 percent, uh, now it's down to 20 percent. And as we continue to work on that final 20 percent, though, uh, in parallel, we also have to work on the quality of education. Uh, the priority right now is to identify classroom strategies uh, that gives kids basic skills, reading, writing, uh, and arithmetic. On the health side, uh, really closing those gaps uh, depends not uh, so much on hospitals, but rather on primary health care. The basic things like vaccines, uh, uh, antenatal care, uh, that we can get out to every community. And the amazing thing about primary health care is that it can cover uh, most of the gaps in, in health that we need. And even uh, uh, some of the very poor countries uh, do a great job. So it's definitely affordable. Uh, one example of a primary health care system that over the last 20 years has become really very strong uh, is in Ethiopia. Uh, this is a country that Melinda and I have been uh, following and engaging with uh, during the entire time we've had the foundation. It was back in 2003 uh, that they put together what they call the Health Extension Program. And uh, they put a health post, uh, like the one we're seeing here, uh, into every village. Uh, it's not high tech at all, it's just the very basic things. Uh, they staffed each of these posts with uh, two health extension workers who are typically local women uh, that had training in uh, basic uh, health care. They're not doctors, they're not even uh, high-end uh, nurses, but they can still do a lot of key things. Uh, they provide uh, contraceptives and uh, help on family planning. Uh, they're very good uh, for prenatal care. Uh, they can do simple deliveries and they're taught how to recognize complications so that uh, those deliveries can be moved to the next level of the health system. Uh, of course, they can give vaccines, hand out bed nets, uh, they have antibiotics so they can treat diarrhea, antimalarials, uh, pneumonia, all of those things uh, they're very good at. And this system, year by year, uh, has been improving and is now functioning quite well across the entire country. Uh, there's 40,000 of those workers, one for every 2,500 people. Uh, so let's go back uh, and look at uh, district by district uh, what has happened in health in Ethiopia uh, during this time frame, uh, starting in 2003 going to today, uh, with their under five mortality. Uh, you can see uh, at the start, 2003, uh, the numbers are pretty bad, up to almost 20 percent, and quite a gap, about 14 percent uh, between the best and the worst. 
If we look at those numbers uh, today, uh, we see two fantastic things. Uh, <laughs> the dots move to the right, uh, and so now uh, you have very few districts that are even uh, up close to uh, 10%, and the gap uh, is much less. It's a 6% gap uh, between the very best and the worst. And so we have made progress, uh, and we've driven equality, the type of equality that we want to see. So now we'll go back to the world map, and as I've been talking now, we're up uh, past 4,000 of these dots, 4,000 kids be born. And so, you know, again, I want to ask, what will their lives be like? Uh, our foundation really is focused on the belief uh, that we shouldn't have red dots or even yellow dots. We want every dot there, every birth, uh, which represents a human being, uh, to have the basic opportunities uh, that we take for granted. Uh, everyone has different dreams, but these basic needs, like health and education, give everyone a chance to achieve those dreams. And you're goalkeepers because you dream of this better, more equal world. And so we need to build it together. Uh, we need to change the odds. Thank you.